Hello and welcome to iRacing in VR. This is the final week of season one of 2019. We are doing an IMSA race at the Nürburgring and I am in the Mercedes AMG GT3. This is going to be a nice easy stroll around the German track, so let's get to the grid and get going. Right then, here we go. Here we are at Nürburgring. We're in the IMSA. I'm in the GT3 class in a Mercedes. And I just want to have a nice little cruise around some uh, safety rating in the bank. So I've joined this really late. It was a toss up between this or the Audi. I quite fancied the Audi, but I thought, you know what, let's just go with the safe option. And go with the Merc. So here we are at Nürburgring, 45 minutes. GT3 and GTE classes. There's no um, Daytona prototypes on this grid. And I'm just gonna sort of float around at the back and try and stay out of trouble as much as possible. He's gone a bit wide. Easy does it, oh he's going slow. Right, one lap down. Just hammer a load more of these out, stick a pit stop in the middle and we're done. I can't remember where I started, that's just typical. Oh, he's gone wide. In a race like this, there's going to be lots of uh, retirements, the occasional wreck. I just want to finish higher than I started and been as I started at the back. That should be pretty much nailed on. Through the stadium section. Can't really go mad because. Oh. Behind has now to oh, he's in the middle of the track. Round we go. Oh. Well, there's an off track for a start, but we didn't uh, didn't suffer any damage, so that's a bonus. Well, I can't go mad because I haven't really tried to push this car to see what it's sort of capable of on this track in this setup. The setup is a Craig setup, which is exceptionally good as usual, but you still need really a fair amount of practice just to know where the, the car's little slides are going to come in. But at least I'm familiar with the circuit. Be a little while before we start to see the uh, GT3 come, uh, cars come. Oh, 
back in just wanting to go there that sharp has turned on the whole circuit Well, at least it's in the daytime. The last IMSA was at Spa and that was at night. And I always have trouble racing at night. All your sighting points have vanished. And this track at night is really tough because the half we're in now, there are no grandstands, so there are no floodlights. And everything is absolutely pitch black. God knows what it's like driving on the Nordschleife at night. It's just forest and road. The chicane's fairly straightforward. The GT chicane, much better than the Grand Prix chicane. You've just basically got to slow to a stop. And, form and Formula 1 cars can do that. They can scrub off huge amounts of speed in very short spaces. But for everybody else, you can't do that. So you may as well just have a chicane, which is just slows you down a bit, but is still sufficiently fast to not break up the racing action. Still having a, a few little teething problems with my wheelbase. Since I've got this brand new wheelbase in replacement for my previous damaged wheelbase, it's just the games have just sort of needed a little bit of tweaking and a little bit of resetting up, which is a right pain. It should just be completely interchangeable. He's gone. having a little trouble with these uh, S's Yellow flag, caution. Oh. oh, 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 On your right. woof Oh Put goodness me, that was close I was being overtaken as I just had a little swerve there to get around that guy It's a good job but I didn't end up in a big three-way mangled metal heap That's Chapman in front, is it? So I think he preempted that and just gave me quite a wide berth, which is good. Well, so far, there's been two spins, both Aldis, and it actually looked like it was the same Aldi. Yeah. I'm very surprised that on the first lap there was no carnage at this corner and also the GT3s uh, were very respectful in the gap that they left to the GTEs well you don't have to, it's, it's nice um, protocol but you don't have to leave a gap, you can go straight at them if you want but the guys at the back of the GT field get the right raving hump if you've got a GT3 car up your backside Well, that's okay. You just tell me when I'm almost out of juice and we'll come in. Uh, just turning in a little bit too early for the left hand, which means I'm too straight for the right hand. 
Oh God, where's he gone? So many people get that corner, not just wrong, but totally wrong, and I don't know why. This is a really straightforward track, the Nürburgring. It's very fast. It's a lovely track to drive. It's very wide for a Formula One track. That's unusual. And it's a classic layout. It's not like it's brand new. So frankly, you've got no excuse if you come off at the Nürburgring. Someone's on the radio. <laughs> it just got a laugh. funny when you look at uh, a lot of the people who are really really vocal on the radio it tends to be them the one that's actually causing the problems they haven't read a situation or they've reacted too slow to it or they've just been reckless so it just always makes me laugh when you get loads of people on the radio shouting at everybody else you think yeah but is it always, you know, it always happens to you, doesn't it? How unfortunate. If only there was some common denominator in all of your accidents. on again But we're racing for position, so that's deceptive. The next car is Bauer. These Mercedes are quite straightforward to drive they're quite easy to get the hang of but they're a bit of a bus it's a Ferrari just hang left let him pass there we go maybe the GT would have been a, a better choice for this Pass buddy, there we go. Is that Chapman again? Where did he come off? Come on, mate, defend your position. No, it's okay, yeah, it's Paul. So since he passed me, he's he's either come off the track or he stopped in a lay by, had a cup of tea or something, and then got back on it. I mean, it seems 
completely counterintuitive and counterproductive. I'm uh, I'm not going balls out, but I can't afford to go balls out in a car that I'm not really sure where the balls when they're out, how far they're out. <laughs> but I'm just concerned more about making it through this race in one piece. Too early again. See that corner is quite straightforward. <laughs> I think he speaks for all of us there. Back to Bauer. So Chapman's taken Bauer. That's half fuel. You've used half your fuel. That's better. A little bit of a lift though. To be honest, if I was in the GT, you could probably take that out flat. There's a lot of things about this track to love. A, it's very wide. It's quite undulating. There's a lot of um, changes in going down and going up. Like this one here just drops away. You've got some very sharp corners like that one. You've got some fairly nice progressive slow speed ones like that one and the next one. Then you've got some fairly quick corners like the chicane. And the last corner's all right. There's lots of places to overtake. The runoffs, for the most part, are fairly big, so you don't always just smash into a wall. And the lap time is around 1.45 to 2 minutes, which is always a good sign. Two minutes a lap is, is pretty decent for a track. You use that as a benchmark, anything under one and a half minutes is quite short, and anything over two, uh, two minutes is going to be a bit longer I mean uh, Suzuka is another excellent example that time there is pretty much two minutes uh, dead this has got good curves as well the curves are fairly reinforced with lots of grippy stuff
and this car still doesn't get into top gear on any part of the track. On the right, clear on the right. So people starting to come in for their pit stops. I've got a red driver on my display. So we've got the GTEs coming up shortly. The guy coming out of the pits. I let him pass because uh, he's in race terms. He's in front of me. If you do it right here. Come on, buddy. There he comes. And I can just file in after him. We're clear on the left side. There you go. And stop the guy behind. But he's pretty quick. He's closed me down, so I don't really mind if he goes past. Now's probably the best place. Let's just move over. Sanchez. And cruise by. A little bit of a lift. There we go. We saw him facing the wrong way a few laps ago. A bit of a lift. That wasn't so bad. Now of all the corners, if you're going to get that one wrong, it'll be on the right-hand S. The car will lose grip coming off the banking. It'll start to oversteer, spin to the right, and that is where the runoff is quite short because it's where part of the sprint track emerges. So if you're going to get the S's wrong, you probably will end up being towed back with your headlamps staring at each other. But this is all right. I'm fairly happy with this. It's been a oh, bit of a wobble there. It's been nice and consistent. All the lap times are extremely close. He's having a bit of trouble. All right, Matt, you're reeling this guy in. The gap's now 0.41. Being caught by that GTE cars. There's win in front. Where's the GTEs? They're not too far. Well, the leader's not too far. He's out on his own at the moment. We're halfway home. We estimate 11 minutes of fuel left. Okay, it's about four to five laps if you're going to play it safe Blue flag. Oh, I think the S's is probably the best place to let the Porsche pass just after the S's oh no he's coming past there we go Work into the pits. Got another GT creeping up. Quite a few GT3s now on my okay, Matt, keep relatives box. Okay. Cars in my mirrors. Be able to do it here, just keep wide. Come on, boys. On the left. Clear on the left. There we go. He's on the left. Clear on the left side. Come on, track limit. Don't want to ruin their race. I've picked up an off track, but no big deal. Well, the Porsche 
um, only has a couple of days of being the new boy in the GT class. This season has drawn to a close. Week 13 starts in a couple of days. And we've got the M8 GTE, which... Uh, the, the M6 was really fast in GT3. Um, the M8 isn't doing too bad. It's still a fairly new car. Left side. You are clear on the left side. But I'm sure it's going to be massively popular. I mean, the Porsche is just ridiculously popular. Everybody drives the Porsche. And it sounds amazing. It handles beautifully. The interior's not terrible to look at for endurance races. Let's see what the... Uh, the beam was like. Blue flag. There's a faster car approaching. Straight to the right. Down your left. Clear on the left. P9. First. Four to five GTEs are all Porsches. Haven't had a great deal of time to race lately. I mean, I had three weeks off with uh, no wheelbase. But since I've got it back, I haven't really had a lot of time to myself. It's, I can normally only race in the evenings, and a lot of my evenings have just been so busy lately. So that's a, a case of trying to get the races you can fit in to just make them last, to have good quality, safe racing. There's no point having loads of races if you're just going to finish half of them. He's gone straight right on. What's happening? Come on. Right clear. Get a car on your I'll right. stay here. You get round. Right. Good lord. Okay. Just check. Not long to go with fuel. Sanchez. Still got a few GTEs behind. driven the McLaren for ages. Have to look and see if there's any races I can have a go in the McLaren. I always found the McLaren quite a tricky car to drive. But that was before I started using Craig setup so I think they may have sorted that out. Fingers crossed anyway. There's a group of faster cars behind. Okay. Got a car on your left. You're clear on the left side. Okay, Matt. We estimate you've got five Another couple. Fuel remaining. Watch your left. You're clear on the left. Left side. Clear on the left. There we go. More Porsches and a single Ferrari. Bit of a clear space behind now. We'll make this the last lap before we pit. The guy 
Bauer in front is Bauer. B9, that lap was a 158.40. Two wide there. Behind. It's not that close. Okay. It's now 29. Come on, Ferrari. Oh, look, the guy that's been yelling on the mic and crashing the whole time has a Red Bull memory. <laughs> Everybody right. hates Red Bull. Clear on the right. Watch your right side. Right side, Indeed. clear. Indeed. It is a common theme, though. If you've got a driver who's really reckless, the chances are he has got a Red Bull livery. And that's one of the reasons I don't run the Red Bull livery. I don't want other drivers to think I'm about to do something absolutely off my nut crazy. Anyway, let's get this thing. Where's the uh, cones? All over there, okay. I imagine I'm quite soon in the pit, so I need to... Oh, well, there it is, Christ. Second... Second box. Right. Fuel. This is okay. Hopefully I've got enough going in. Off we go. Inching our way along pit lane. Got plenty of time before we have guys up my backside okay, so should only have about 10 minutes left hopefully this fuel gets to the end I think one of the problems with the S's is the problem that I've always had from day one and that is I'm just not turning my wheel enough and it sounds so straightforward and basic but I use uh, a GT wheel as opposed to a round wheel and you don't really want to have to turn the GT wheels too much because they're not perfectly Spherical. He's having trouble. Is that Burger? Oh god, he was winning at one point. He's really been stuffed by somebody. Probably with a Red Bull livery. But with the GT, you only really want to go to 360 degree rotation. So half turn left and half turn right. But even so, I don't tend to go to the full lock.
Well, I'm very pleased I haven't had any prangs so far. And considering you, we had two cars kind of stuck in the middle of the road, that was all right. I've had a few 1Xs for off tracks, so I think I'm up to about four. And two of those came on um, one incident with, I think it was an Audi just sitting in the middle of the track. And we all had to go round. So in terms of incident points, this has been a really good race. Obviously I'd prefer zero, but... Four for minor off-track infractions is perfectly acceptable. I've gained more places, or I've gained a higher position than when I started, so that's mission accomplished. So we've only got a few laps left, and uh, this has been a fairly successful race, really. I'm not going to win any awards. I might win the award for iRacing's best backmarker. That'd be nice. Round to come, but another Ferrari. Thank you. I mean, I'm not. Uh, I'm never going to win race after race. More often than not, especially in GT3 multi-class, I will get overtaken more than I overtake but it'd be nice if other drivers see my name and think oh I'm not going to have any problems from this guy just helps everybody else relax I know certainly when I'm racing in the higher classes and I want to overtake people if it's a name I recognize and they're no grief you don't tend to have too many problems another one passed There he goes, mouthing off again. If you spent your time just driving and not looking for the radio transmit button. Just ever so slowly, bit by bit, getting rid of the rustiness that three weeks away builds up. You've got ten minutes of fuel remaining. Okay. How are we doing on time? Six minutes left, ten minutes of fuel. That should be absolutely perfect. That's better, and still he's on the radio. I had the inside, Oh. 
car length back only hit turn one. No, no. Hmm. I'm amazed at how people have the time to have a full fledged conversation with another driver during a race. Some people really think that the that dive bombing is a bit tight. Yeah, I passed it. He blew the final chicane. We were side by side, and then he serves as a slowdown and then tries to dive bomb me back up the inside. The dive bomb. The scourge of racing everywhere. Okay, guy in the mirror. The people just don't understand that even when there's a gap, like every time there's a gap, doesn't mean you can dive in. In dirt relevance, I'm going to close here. Which he uses as justification to take down the line for us. I still have about two left, uh, two laps left or thereabouts, and this is a GT3 behind me, so he's done all right. Through the next, but he can slide past. By the way, he's been driving. He's on your right. Clear right. There we go. Easy does it. Blimey, Bowers miles back then. I don't know uh, if he took tyres on at a pit stop that would put him that far back. You don't need tyres in a 45 minute race, not at all. If you're doing a few hours, then yeah, every time you come in for a fuel, might as well change the tyres. But for this 45 minute race, yeah, not worth it. But if you haven't unchecked them before the race starts, then they're going to change them whether you like it or not. So. It's all about preparation. Fuel level lows come back on, that's uh, a little bit worrying. You say one more lap, crew chief, but there's no white flag. And if I haven't got a lot of fuel left, this could be a problem. So do I do I pit and top up or not? I'll have to just start to coast a bit. I don't know where's the fuel gone. I had ten minutes of fuel with six and a bit minutes of racing. So where was four minutes of fuel gone? Nice Audi behind me that looks like a barber shop pole. Well, 
Well, I've still got power a long way back. Hopefully, I'm not going to run out of fuel. Well, hopefully, I'm not going to run out of fuel anywhere than the home, uh, the start finish straight. So is this the finish then, crew chief? Because now I've got a white flag, which tells me I've got one more left. Great. And it doesn't look as, uh, look as though I've got a full lap of fuel. This guy in front's had to splash and dash. So I'm going to have to severely fuel save here. Short shift and cruise hopefully uh, what's his face Bauer let's just let the Audi past hopefully Bauer's not clear. gonna close it down too much let's get up the gears just drift a bit still got a decent gap but I absolutely definitely must not run out of fuel on the track I can't believe how that would happen to have 10 minutes of fuel and 6 minutes left something's not right there easy does it right let's get shifting up got long left on the fuel counter on my display but this is okay we're in the final corner oh there it is running out of fuel coming out of the finish line there we go oh so ninth in class don't know what it was to start, but let's have a look at the results. That was fuel time to perfection. Incident points, about four, I think. Yep, four points. And how did I do? Oh, wow. 37 the 25th. Anyway, there it is. Thanks for watching.